that's about it. We've made a villager breeder, and so begin the start of our trading hall. So now that we're here, we're going to go collect some stuff uh, in order to build the Void Trading Hall. But instead of collecting all the materials and placing them over there, we're actually going to build the stations in which we can gather resources in the Void itself. It's not going to be a big station, obviously, but it's for the purposes of actually getting the resources there without having to dump it all in the limited shulker boxes that I have. We're going to create small mini auto farms, not micro farms, just small farms in order to do it. So let's go grab some stuff. Welcome to Kika Core, where safety is a concern. We're going to be going over how to dupe gravity blocks. We're going to be needing those materials in order to make the villager trading hall, or more specifically, the void trading hall. Now, granted, you don't have to dupe these. Some people will call this cheaty, but I personally have always been of the mindset because there's no easy way to get sand or gravel easily in order to get these materials in a large enough quantity that it could be usable. And so here we are. So this setup is a gravity block duper. Right now, we are going to be duping sand. So, like with all end portals, you'll have a structure that looks like this. Now, it doesn't matter where in the world you are, all portal frames always go to the same landing spot in the end. So the question is, how do you get rid of the portal frames? Well, that's actually quite easy, and this has been a thing for quite a while. Just get a red mushroom, grab some bone meal, and basically what you want to do is, from under here, you want to go back to, and on the bottom one, grab your red mushroom and just start spamming it, and you'll come to find the red mushrooms will actually break the end portal frames without you actually having to do anything with it. Okay, so we'll just build it right over here, right underneath the portal frame what you're going to want to do is build a sticky piston then from here you want to go out three one two three then on the bottom go out three more and then have repeater pointed that way and have it go set to four then from here we go up two and then put down redstone dust from that point on to this point then from here you want to put a cobblestone block or whatever building material you have right on top of that you want to put down one cobblestone block right behind it then put a redstone torch right there you want to put down a redstone dust and a repeater going forward with one tick on top of this redstone you place down one cobblestone and then on top of this you want to put down a sticky piston like that then from here put down a torch and two blocks right on top put down your redstone dust and then put down a repeater with two ticks gonna put a cobblestone right there have a line of three sticky pistons facing this way we want the slime blocks where there is only a single piston then from here just grab the chest and just plonk it down and there you go that's basically it and that's more or less how you build a gravity block duper i have my alts out and about making sure to afk in the spots that i need them to a mortal yes i am a human <laughs> kane kane's in the server right now and i think it's quite hilarious you humans are the best that's why no one ever is a human in mmos last time on stream i actually went over to the end and made a villager reader to get one specific villager that can give me an air of weakness it took about six hours to do but i managed to finally get to that point I, don't, I forgot to bring an ender chest and we're going to grab ourselves a spare elytra just in case because I don't have mending yet in case my elytra breaks while I'm trying to build this thing. And I know there's a second end ship where this portal is. So we're going to go up there real quick. First things first, we got to go grab this dragon head. Yoink. Grab our second elytra real quick. Let's head back to the end island. It's been almost 800 days since the server started. And people have been building around. And eventually, I do want to do a server tour. But I want to like have the server run for a couple of months before we actually go ahead and do that. So here's the plan. I'm going to build the void trading hall one level at a time. Because uh, I have found a lot of technical builds just like show the entire thing. The technical guide world has always been about breaking down redstone contraptions to its basic level. Limits. It serves as sort of an entry point to the technical way of playing Minecraft. And so the Void Trading Hall I made breaks down the machine into its most basic level. That way, anyone who doesn't have that kind of knowledge of redstone can build themselves and kind of understand a little bit more when it comes to redstone, as well as rail mechanics and other game mechanics that they want to input in their own world. So right now, we're clearing up the area of the like impromptu tree farm, and we're going to use this area, instead of breaking it down, into like a temporary industrial district, a mini industrial district, in order to get resources that we need in order to make this build. Okay, tree is now knocked down. It's time to make this mini industrial center. Oh, I forgot to bring water of all the things to forget. Ugh, lol, imagine forgetting water. Hey, that's not very nice. We'll build a cobblestone generator on the 
far sides. If you want to learn how to make a cobblestone generator, I actually made a YouTube short about it. You can check it out in the description below or in the top right. Perfect timing. Oh, I'm such a genius. We've been using the Braille Duper from previous episodes in order to do this. It's like Dr. Stone. All the things that we've learned thus far, we are now putting into practice. Everything on the technical play style always built on top of each other. It always makes me feel good whenever like we tech up. Because we're basically using everything that we've learned so far and then building right on top of it. Okay, and with that, we have a very rudimentary rail duper, but that'll work. So that's there. Now we need to get ourselves some stone. So the reason why we are actually building a gravity block duper is because the plan basically just requires a lot of concrete. Quick interruption. I know that only 10% of you actually subscribe to this channel. Watching this long, I must be doing something right. So if you like this video, hit that like button and please subscribe to this channel. Any support helps and these videos take a bit long to make. Thank you so much and back to the video. Okay, so before we got ourselves some corn flour, which will turn into blue dye. And if we craft our poppy, we get a red dye. Now when you combine the two, of course you get purple dye. Now we have bone meal, which as you all know, will turn into white dye. Now from here, we have two options. We can either make white concrete powder or purple concrete powder. Now, before we turn this machine on, we need to make sure that the chunk loader is indeed working because we won't be here on the other side to make sure that the redstone here is still functioning. So if you hear in the background, the chunk loader is now loading the chunk. And so when we turn this machine on going to the end it'll continue to keep working let's start this machine up and see what happens on the other side here on the other side and as you can see that the triple duped sand blocks just keep coming over and over again thus reloading the subsidian as well as giving us so much concrete it's absolutely glorious <laughs> and we're gonna need this in order to make the void trading market. All right, let's collect all of our concrete powder and go process them. This is gonna take a bit. All right, now that we've processed all this concrete, it's time to actually build this. Now the way you set this up is pretty simple. I use the end gateway as a sort of reference point as to where to put this thing. In order to move it in place, you can look at the placement origin. Left clicking would make this go right, and right clicking would make this go left on the x-axis. And on the z-axis, it'll go forwards and back on the z-axis. Then y-axis also goes up and down. Pretty self-explanatory. Alright, now that we set this in place, now you can see what we're really trying to go for in the key cord trading hall. So, let's get building.
It's been almost eight hours since starting this build, but we're finally almost finished. The topmost layer is almost covered, which means I can give the grand tour of this place. Not that you couldn't see it from the replay, but hey, it is what it is, right? This took a lot longer than it needed to, uh, mostly because I was also seeing other people's builds, seeing what part of their stuff I wanted to implement into this one as sort of like a inspiration to this build. And ultimately, I have combined about three different people's builds, one including my own. So this is the <laughs> culmination, I guess, the first collab project when it comes to the RC and SMP. It's incredibly hard to build this when your light is about to break, so you only fly when it's an emergency so right over here is the entrance now i got a lot of these detailing uh concepts by mayan shinome and i need to go put a sign but this is the cage in which they come in so there's a couple of things that went into the design process number one is that the flooring had to be soul sand eventually i want to get soul speed to zoop around and so you have to figure out a way to make it look good while also being functional it's the like one of the few things that i had a hard limit on had to be surrounded by soul soil number two is that all the redstone had to be relatively untouched now if you're wondering why there's netherrack and cobblestone here it's because the netherrack is just a placeholder while the cobblestone is going to be a preview of what the items are going to be. And when you press these buttons, the whole thing functions as you come to expect it. Now, you might notice that there are buttons here on the sides that don't actually tie up to anything. Well, these are sort of, oh my goodness, this is not concrete. These are like uh, troubleshooting. Just in case the gate closes and the person's still behind, it'll send back the villager as well as pull the gate back down. While this one is just to give this a hard reset in case one of the villagers landed in a place that it wasn't supposed to and they can just right click and reset it same thing with these two and we just need to get one last touch of course the water all right and there you go everything works as it should of course i don't have any villagers to load this place up yet that's about it and now all we gotta do now is not only get the villagers but also optimize them